Shannon Self and welcome to Berlin to the next edition of American European Values series of conferences. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to um, first time in Berlin and first time at the conference? It is. It Your is. impressions? It's, it's wonderful. It's been a wonderful conference. It's a wonderful city. So I'm grateful to be here. Uh, I do appreciate you say about the city. We all know that Berlin is wonderful. What about the conference? Why do you like it? I'm getting to see old friends, um, old faces, meet new friends, new philosophers, new people, and it's wonderful to be here celebrating Professor Locks's work. Um, what do you think about the discussions? They've been rich, they've been lively, mm -hmm. um, they've been... Not reading papers? Uh, well, you know, we're reading papers as okay. philosophers do, okay. but there's been a lot of, I appreciate the way the conference has been designed to have, have a lot of discussion. I really appreciate the way the uh, as we say leaders did their plenary sessions. So we're all here together for each session. We're hearing each paper, and the ideas get to build on top of each other. Um, that makes the discussion, the philosophical discussion, even richer. Uh, you gave your paper yesterday, right? Yes. What short play? What it was it? It was arguing that joyful living is at the center of Locke's philosophy, and that. Um, disagreeing in somewhat with Professor Locks about his own work, that there, there are elements of Stoicism and Pragmatism and Santayana's philosophy that are important, of course, to his work, but that neither or none of those three really capture the heart of his work. Um, both Stoicism and Pragmatism, in some ways, are too focused on control, either control of the future or self-control, and don't make enough room for just lingering in the joyful moment and savoring those moments. And Santayana gets closer to that, but at least on Locke's account of Santayana, uh, Santayana is too pessimistic, too disillusioned, too disengaged. Um, and and Locke's work is full of energy. It just bounds off the page, as I was talking about. And so we need, we need some way of capturing that and seeing that as um, it also helps us make sense of a lot of the really vibrant examples and images that are there so the puppies playing and um, listening to music and children and these these aren't they're brief examples sometimes but I see them as central to his work as affirming joyful flourishing and living. Mm -hmm. Our conference is dedicated to practical philosophy. Do you think philosophers can, as if, get out of university and to say something to the members of the public? It's been a challenge for us lately. I mean, it's funny, it didn't used to be, at least in the United States, 80, 100 years ago. We know John Dewey was a major public philosopher. We've had some interesting debates about whether Santayana, even in Spain, perhaps, was a sort of public uh, intellectual, a public philosopher. Um, and I know uh, uh, this is central to John Locke's work, and it's another, it's another reason his work is really important. And I think you do, um, unfortunately, I'm not as familiar with the situation in Berlin and in Germany. But you do in the United States see a little bit more of engagement um, in newspapers, um, not just on the web, but also on the web. You see philosophers engaging more and trying to carve out more of a role for being um, a, a public voice calling for um, a broader process of thinking about interesting ideas that aren't narrowly or technically philosophical, but are still philosophical in terms of having rich import for people's everyday lives. Very briefly, what is your message to our viewers? Uh, come to Berlin. <laughs> come come do philosophy. Come do philosophy um, with the, the, the group that focuses on European American values and uh, and pick up one of John Locke's books, uh, maybe particularly in love with life. That that one might be my favorite. Sharon Sullivan, thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. It's nice to be here.